There's no place to escape to. This is the last time. On the left. <laughs> Side stories. That's when the cannibalism started. Side, Side stories. stories. <laughs> yes. Oy, oy, oy. Um, I don't help. <laughs> Can I get someone help? help? Help. Can I phone a friend? I need some help. Can I phone a friend and at, have them come? At this point, unfortunately, the only friend you have to phone is me and I'm here in it with you. Fuck. <laughs> um, okay. I'm not going to do this. You're not hearing the melodious tones of Ben Kissel right now because he is on a sabbatical. Good way of putting it. That's up. a good way of putting it. He's on a sabbatical out there and he is looking after his mental health his physical health. Yes, Ben is going into treatment, but he will be back. There's no correct time to do something like this. There's no proper time. Uh, and we've been concerned about his health for a minute now. And uh, we've made a lot of jokes about it. And yeah. I'm certainly uh, very guilty of that. I've made yeah. a lot of jokes because I'm just a funny, dumb shit bro who is just fighting through a cloud of his own jokes. It's just, I, it, this, times. this is how, you know, as comedians, is how we process emotions. Yes. But this is also how we avoid emotions and yes. how we avoid talking about real shit. Yes. And the time to talk about real shit came. Yeah, it came. And so we're here. We're going to handle our shit, which is the shows, the network. We're here. Um, We're not going to be missing anything. We're going to be putting out the stream and the shows and the radio. And we're going to have all of our family and friends are going to come in and help fill that gap. Uh, And, uh, you know, because, I mean, I'm going to be frank. We love this job. Yeah. We love what we do. We love our lives here. Um, but sometimes we just get wrapped up in it and we we forget to take care of ourselves. And that's what's kind of this. This is all about. Yeah. We uh, we forget to take care of ourselves and we forget to take care of each other. And this is the definition of mental health is not your fault, but it is your responsibility. And it's his responsibility and he's taking care of it. Yes. And, um, and that, we're that's all now. we can really ask. And, and all we can ask is, you know, the love and support uh, that we've gotten from all of you over these years, you know, just keep supporting us. We fucking need it. And, and we're, we're just fucking we people. We're just <laughs> you know, humans. We're just, we we're are just unfortunately a bunch, people. We're, we're unfortunately just a bunch of fucking dudes and gals trying to make our way through this shit and trying to figure this shit out. Yeah. Uh, uh, and we just, you know, we, we'd like y'all there to help us figure this shit out and get through it. The only I'm, way... The, we're just going to keep shoveling. Yeah. All right. We're just going to be here. We're going to keep shoveling. We're going to put out all of We're going to do this shit. And, you know, this too shall pass. Yes, it shall. Uh, but yes, uh, thank you guys. And uh, I guess this is growing up. <laughs> is that good? Can, yeah, I, yeah, can I do? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you've been doing it forever. So, I mean. I but guess now maybe, it like is, though. Now it's true. I, I guess this is growing up. I need help. Like that? I need a reach out. <laughs> uh, but thank you. And let's, uh, let's kick this pick. Let's kick this pick. Let's get into some new. JFK bullshit. bullshit. Or is it? Is it? It's just not. It's fine. Let's hear what this old fuck has to say. Okay, so all right, all right. Let me get let me get comfortable with you because this is the first time. All right, inside stories, right? Technically, I'm the prepared one. <laughs> so this, <laughs> no, this, no, this is, you're always the prepared I'm one. I'm the prepared one. But this time, I'm the fucking prepared one. Well, you came in the week hot. A breakthrough article, quote unquote, uh, more quote unquote, a breakthrough article okay. because it's more new shit about very, very, very old shit. But I don't know whether I mean, what does it fucking mean? OK, so every couple years, like as a JFK fan, I guess a JFK <laughs> assassination fan, you're a JFK assassination head, you're a stan <laughs> I'm a, I'm to a, I'm a sass head, you're a sass head. <laughs> So uh, things come out all the time about the JFK assassination. There's always a new witness. Uh, there's always somebody who said that they saw something that nobody had ever seen before. And it just kind of gets added to the pile. But over the years, the people that we really haven't heard a lot from are the Secret Service agents. And we fucking know why. <laughs> if you listen to the JFK series on last podcast and left, you will know why that they are all super cagey. No one said anything for fucking 70 years. Well, our theory, the theory that we go for is that was it was a theory that was put out by this guy named his last name is Donahue. Mm -hmm. I can't remember his first name, but his last name's Donahue. Uh, and since the like 70s, this guy has been telling everybody, screaming into the fucking darkness, 
the Secret Service agents accidentally murder JFK during a workplace accident. And I want to remind you, again, we like, yes, we prosper this, this version of the JFK assassination, because in my head and what we talked about on the show was that like, of course, though, like, of course, one of the turning points in modern history would be a workplace accident. You know, like, that's incredible. And, like, yeah. I, I'm still kind of like, you know, I don't trust the CIA unless you do read Jack Scarfati and you get in all of his stuff about how, like, we're all just, you know, that we're dreams of angels. Are we now? Yeah. And he used to work for the CIA. News to I, me. Yeah. But, you know, the CIA is like, you, know, you can't trust them, obviously. You obviously. never know what the hell is going on. But it always kind of feels like, as we talked about in our series, is that the CIA has tried to do a lot of these very organized assassinations, but they're not super good at it. They're just really good at making props. Yes, they're very good at making props, and they are very good at... Destabilizing governments of other places. Exactly. They're good at fucking things up. They're yeah. really good at destruction, but as far as planning shit goes, the CIA isn't the best at getting shit done. Yeah, you know, and then they still... They can, but th we, this is just our, one of our favorite theories. Yeah. So what happened? So where does this article come from? So what happened... Uh, as this guy, his name is Paul Landis. Paul Landis was the guy on the running board on JFK's limo. So he so was on the, his car. He's on JFK's car. He was the partner to the guy who jumped on the back as the limousine sped away after JFK was killed. So was that the person that was like Jackie was running to? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he's so oh, this is the same guy. No, this isn't. This is that guy's partner. Oh, so he's like his Robin? <laughs> yeah, he's, actually. He's, he's, like he's his, his backup. His sous chef? Yeah, yeah, he's his backup. He's the guy, he was the guy that was over on the running board, I believe to the right. Okay. Like right next, like, so you, like right house next right to JFK. House right or house left? <laughs> stage right. Right, stage. It was stage right. Yeah, it was stage right. If you're facing JFK's <laughs> gaping head wound, it's stage right. Thank you for explaining it so that Stephen Sondheim <laughs> could understand it. I believe from heaven. Because I think he's fucking dead. So this guy has stayed silent about the JFK assassination for years and years. After the assassination, he quit the Secret Service uh, and he lived a normal life. He said he said something that had nothing to do with presidents. Yeah, I honestly <laughs> think it's great. I was, wa I was watching a recent, one of those like dumb videos that showed up on Instagram or whatever, and it was of, very strange, not strange, but it was Bill Clinton, right? And he was like outside some bakery, but he was just hovering. Mm -hmm. Right. Like he's just like he was doing a very old manny thing that I did not I've not really understood where he was like he was outside of I'll do an act out which you can't hear. But he was standing outside of a bakery like looking at it was like a like, he, you know, when you see guys look into the engine of a, of a trunk, when they, they mm -hmm. pop open a trunk and they look into an engine, and they're like, hey, what? Hey, what do you got going on here? <laughs> he was just like looking at this bunch of cupcakes like they were like he was about to buy a bunch of women. <laughs> and then when he goes in there, you see the two Secret Service guys that he were with. And there's just like, I love what they believe is like regular guy clothing mm -hmm. that make them not look like they have bulletproof vests <laughs> and like body armor all over their arms. So it's just like wearing like a tan golfing shirt. Yeah. And they're just like, we're like, Oh yeah, cool. No, he's not a, a armed guard. No, but this guy just ended up living. Like, I think he was a real estate agent for a while. Like he worked in construction, just regular, regular Joe jobs. Yeah. But he said that he was haunted by the assassination. He said I fucking he would, bet. He, he better have. He said he could not close his eyes without seeing like JFK's blah, head explode. Blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. And her's gonna go and her scream and it's yeah, it's bad, man. No, it's not good. And so he's getting to the end of his life and he's Is getting... it weird to go to sleep watching the Sapruder film? <laughs> I just let it roll. Yeah. Honestly, it's you know what kind of makes me like relax is that that sound from like old but that's like just, yeah, eight what, millimeter or whatever. I can get you a white noise machine that has that noise if you want. No, but then you don't have JFK's head exploding in slow motion again and again and again. <laughs> I can, we can, uh, I guarantee you that we can have a fan do one of those 12 hour YouTube <laughs> Uh, videos. There's just 12 hours of JFK getting assassinated <laughs> with eight ASMR with eight millimeter <laughs> running footage. Like, tch, 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 tch. yeah, I just think ASMR. That, yeah, technically, yeah. To go to sleep and to chill and to chill and study too. To chill and study too. Yeah, yeah. Assassination <laughs> footage to to chillax with. This goal eight millimeter ASMR. <laughs> so this guy was haunted for years and years, and he's now getting to the end of his life. So now we're getting to deathbed confession time. I always even saying this. He's not dying but he's getting close he because he feels like that well this is his 
This is his final shot. Mm -hmm. This is his Hail Mary to finally, like, get get all the detention he never got. Because, I, you know, I work for the CIA. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you do. And so when I... Do I? I don't think I'm allowed to know. (laughs) I actually don't think I'm... (laughs) Looking at the cut of your... You might... Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, same, same, same. Yeah, uh, you but, don't know, do you? No, but I can't wait to have my deathbed confession. Oh my god, deathbed confessions for the, these CIA guys because I'm come all over the you know the various like high strangest subreddits. And, and to shit. make it clear, this is a Secret Service guy. This, this is, is not a CIA service. guy. But I love the idea. Of, there's so many because now these days too, all of the CIA guys and their fucking mothers are coming out talking about aliens being amongst us and hanging out and like you know creating temporal portals using mental activities and like literally traveling through various like literally traveling using your brain traveling to other planets and then coming back you got Obama being gay like that's (laughs) fucking back like all of these guys they're all three pointers from the fucking hospice yeah and so this guy decides that he's gonna write a book he's gonna come out with some new information about the JFK assassination that we'd never heard before and what he says well, now what he said was, <laughs> he said that after the body, after JFK's body was taken out of the limousine, he said that he found a bullet in the back seat of the limousine. Okay, so now this is within the car. Within the car. He found a bullet that was in the back seat of the limousine that was supposed to be the so-called magic bullet. The, the full metal jacket bullet. The bullet that was supposed to have struck JFK in the back, hit him through the wrist, and then eventually hit uh, Governor Connolly in the front seat. And the reason why that's explained is because the back seat that JFK in was elevated above the seat of the governor in front of him. Yeah, either he was elevated above or JFK was below. And that's the yeah. shot that supposedly came from Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah. Right. From, they went through and it's and it slicked through his body into yeah. the other guy's body. Yeah. Now you're not saying that because there's another bullet within the car that JFK did it himself. <laughs> Right? Are you saying that he did it with a small gun? <laughs> Is that what this guy's saying? He had one of those CIA teeth guns. Oh, yeah. Honestly, they never work. <laughs> Not a single one of their inventions work. You go to that stupid propaganda museum in yeah. D.C., and it's just children mm-hmm. playing with toys. That the CIA has not incre- It's crazy. Okay, yeah. okay, I'll, I'll never get over it. Well, what this and so what they're vaguely saying, and I'm not quite sure. The I, article is unclear. Well, it's. All of it is very unclear because what? it's a all, JFK assassination. <laughs> yes, yet another JFK deathbed confession. Well, it's not deathbed yet, but yet another JFK new evidence thing is again unclear. Big fucking surprise. But what this guy says is that it now he says that it changes his opinion as to whether there were one or two shooters. Yes. Um but because he says he was of the mind entirely that there was one shooter. There was Lee Harvey Oswald mm-hmm. that shot him, what, I guess twice, right? Yeah, that Lee Harvey Oswald shot him twice. And this guy says that after he stopped being a Secret Service agent, he claims to have never read a single thing about the JFK assassination for like, 30, until like 2014. I, he didn't start, He did because he, he said that it was so traumatizing to oh, him, sure, he didn't want to sure. hear anything about it. He didn't read the Warren Commission. He didn't, fo- anytime he saw the words JFK, he looked the other way and didn't hear anything about it. No, I mean, you got to be a special person anyway to read the Warren Commission. Never mm-hmm. mind me see an active head explode. <laughs> that was a guy you knew. You know what I mean? Yeah, a guy you other, knew, that you were charged with protecting. Oh yeah, because that's also, I feel like, obviously where a lot of the trauma is associated is that like, yeah, he's your boss and shit, but you still know the guy. Yeah. And he sounded like he was a nice guy. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you, you, they loved butts. Yeah. When here's where it changes the narrative is that this guy, Paul Landis, said that he found the bullet in the back seat. Supposedly, the bullet, the, the so called magic bullet, was found on the stretcher holding Governor Connolly. Yes. Because that's what it says that the bullet jostled out of Connolly's body and landed on the stretcher. But what this guy says is that he picked up the bullet and put it on JFK's stretcher. And the theory that he has is that at one point, the two stretchers bumped up, clanked, and the bullet jumped from JFK's stretcher over to Governor Connolly's stretcher. So it was Mo, Larry, and Curly... (laughs) 
<laughs> that disrupted the entire like chain of ownership of the bullet. Yeah. And this guy also says that he remembers distinct. He said that he remembers there being two shots instead of three. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is where the story falls apart. Yeah, Let's fucking get yeah, into it. Tear him apart. Let's get this old fucking man. I want to get him. <laughs> I want him here in the square. So. <laughs> well, first of all, like he's not really being taken seriously by big, like serious JFK scholars like Gerald Posner, the guy who wrote Case Closed that we used as the yeah, main of course. source. His book's called Case Closed. <laughs> He's like, I wrote the last book. It's kind of over already. What you're doing, stop trying to make the third bullet happen. Yeah, uh, but he's saying there's not a lot to this. He doesn't see. He there's no there there. I close this case. <laughs> he just like shows a picture of him with a big case. It's closed. I don't know what else we need to say. We don't need to open back up. Go ahead and buy my book. Yeah, he said he doesn't question Landis's sincerity, but he just says that the story doesn't add up. And I concur with that. Sure. I read the full, there's a full New York Times article in advance of this guy's book. I want to read the book, though. Yeah, I'd like to read the book, but the New York Times article does, you know, do a pretty good job of summarizing Landis's case. Uh, and he says that he found this bullet in the back seat and the bullet did not actually hit Governor uh, Connolly in the front seat. But here's what we know. We know that JFK was hit through the back first. I, I, I know that. Yeah, we know that. Some people don't. Some people don't, but he was hit in the back and that was supposedly the bullet that the Secret Service agent found. Yes. Thing is, though, Governor Connolly also had to have been shot. If that bullet didn't travel through and hit Governor Connolly, had the there, bullet had, get in it. there had to be two shots. Why the bullet not in there? That's at least two shots. So G Governor Connolly is shot and JFK shot in the back. However... There is the matter of the shot that exploded the president's fucking head. Wait a second, though. And I know Kissel's not here, but he, we, we discovered this. His head just did that. We did not discover this. A certain person kept insisting <laughs> that his head just did his that. His head just did that. That was not a consensus amongst the group. Now, when his ex head, so, so okay. But, but, what that, but yeah. that is to say that what this guy actually proved is that there were three shots. He, while he's saying on one on one hand he's saying that there are two shots, what this if he is if what he is saying is true, it proves that there were three shots. Right from your grave. Okay, and now now that being said, yes. I don't remember when we were originally going over the the, the actual like shooting, like the idea of the one man theory with mm -hmm. Lee Harvey Oswald. Now, we, it's always kind of a conjecture or a guess about whether how many shots he got off, right? There's conjecture. Because it's, I know that they try to triangulate with the various walkie-talkies to figure out the shot numbers, right? Yeah. Now we know that at least two things hit the president, right? Like, during that whole exchange. But the issue is, is that, like, I guess if there was a, something else had to go. If there's a, something else there, then there was a third shot. Yes, there was that there was absolutely a third shot like that proves that proves that there is a third shot. Um, but what's interesting about this is that what this guy has accidentally done is that he's actually bolstered the Secret Service accident theory. Yeah. Now, let's go through this just a little bit to sure. remind all of our listeners exactly what the Secret Service theory is. Again, our favorite, not maybe what happened, but our favorite theory. Yes, this is our favorite theory, but I do believe with every fiber of my fucking being that this is how the president died. This is how President Kennedy was killed. So the night before the assassination, all of the senior agents, they'd been working long shifts. All of the senior agents all went out to a strip club in Dallas the all party. and got fucking housed. Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, and then they came back at like 5 a.m. They left one, one of the junior agents that they left behind was a guy named George Hickey. Yes. George Hickey was the automotive guy. George Hickey was the dude that was basically in charge of making Making sure the fucking presidential limousine had enough gas. That's honestly, that's a good job. <laughs> because if you get in there, man, that's a lot of control that you don't understand that you have. Yeah. Uh, but he was basically, you know, he's the automotive guy, but he's still a Secret Service agent. So since all of the senior agents were still basically drunk when the fucking motorcade went out at 7 a.m. that morning, they said, okay, George, 
You're the guy that's going to handle the fucking rifle today. You're going to get the AR-15. You're getting the big one. And the AR-15 at the time was a brand new weapon. The Secret Service was just sort of trying it out. And George Hickey was in the limousine behind the president. And so they're going down. They're going driving through Dealey Plaza. Lee Harvey Oswald takes his shot. Boom. It hits JFK. Lee yes. Harvey Oswald takes a second shot. Boom. It hits another guy. At this point, the Secret Service agent in the back freaks out. His AR-15 is the safety's off. It's ready to go. That's what some of the Secret Service agents uh, testify to. It's the Secret Service. It's ready to go. He freaks out and he accidentally pulls the trigger. He falls or maybe falls backwards as they show they stop the car short. Yeah, Yeah, stop the car short. However it happened. The AR-15 bullet hits JFK in the head and explodes his brains. You can go listen to the episode for the full explanation. There's all sorts of ballistics that back this up. Uh, There's all sorts of autopsy evidence that backs this up. There's all sorts of cover-up evidence uh, that backs this up. And those are two of the big things here. The ballistics and the cover-up. This article accidentally bolstered both of those theories. It's so funny because now I'm going through because at the time when Mortal Error came out, there was a lot of people trying to like obviously debunk it too because there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of people with kind of money riding mm-hmm. on Lee Harvey Oswald being the only shooter. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people with money riding on the CIA did this to create a new era in American history, mm-hmm. right? We can this. So there's a lot of people that are afraid to let go of their pet like theories about something that's like largely unknowable. We'll never really know what happened at the very center of this whole thing. But, you know, it's interesting because now I'm trying to get into the, there's the debunking of it, but it's all about angles. <laughs> and it's very difficult. It's all about, because the problem well, is that, that. But that's that's just an argument between two people because yes. Donahue did prove the angles work out. The yeah. angles do hold true. Then there's the other people. See, so talk about you know the bullet either curved up to the right, or they're curved up and to the left. And again, we're doing John Holmes next week. We're not here in the middle of <laughs> talking about these curves. I don't really understand all of this angle talk. Well, this guy. I mean, the first question that you're going to ask is like, okay, if this was a Secret Service guy that's coming out with this, and if it was a Secret Service guy uh, that did it, why does this guy know nothing? about a Secret Service agent accident. Because a conspiracy that is very small is much easier to cover up than a conspiracy that is very large. Exactly. And let's go ahead and go for the first thing that this article revealed uh, is that this guy did not go into the trauma room where Kennedy was taken, and it's supposedly in that room that it was discovered that it was probably an AR-15 bullet, that it was probably a Secret Service agent bullet. He was outside by the door. He did not go inside. Second of all, at the scene, when they were at the hospital and this guy's going over the, the limousine, he act- said that he actually touched bullet fragments that were on the limousine yes. in a pile of blood. And that also bolsters the AR-15 theory because the AR-15 bullet was, uh, what do you call it? How do you, it exploded in his brain. Yeah, fragmentation. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, what's it, it called? Frag- hollow point. Yeah, it was a fragmentation bullet. Uh, and the bullets that Lee Harvey Oswald used were not fragmentation bullets. Uh, they were full metal jacket, if yes. I remember correctly. Yes. Uh, these fr- And so this guy found fragmented bullets, which again points towards the theory that an AR-15 rifle was the rifle that actually shot the shot. Now we're in the middle of this whole idea. Now I'm looking at this because, well, and the main issue of all of this information is that it's all based upon uh, the highly fucked up autopsy. Yeah. So th- there's a, that's also what we talk about objective truth. Mm-hmm. All the time. It's so hard to actually pin it down at any one of these moments unless you're there watching it because they, even just all of the stuff are these concrete theories are based on or based on a medical procedure that was fucked up. Well, well, the directives that were given to the x-ray technician who was in charge of x-raying the president's brain at the fucking scene, he saw... Another cool job. Yeah. Because I'd yeah. love to know what they're really fucking thinking. And I'm sick and tired of not knowing. I want some transparency. That's right. He saw that JFK's head was full of exploded bullet fragments, but he was told to keep his mouth shut. Uh, and even more damaging was what the Secret Service 
Service asked him to do. The Secret Service and the technician superior instructed this guy to manufacture an X-ray that would obscure the detection of a frangible bullet and make it appear as if the fragments present in the president's skull came from a full metal jacket bullet. Right, and listen. I got I got to walk back the old thing. Full metal jacket bullets do also fragment, but it's a different kind of fragmentation. And the thing is about this is that this technician did not say this to a conspiracy theory author. He did not say this to some French newspaper. He gave this testimony under oath in 1995 to members of Congress after they passed the JFK Records Act. So what he decided, honestly, which was one of the most controversial decisions that happened in the moment, is that they cut the top of uh, JFK. They got, you know, the rest of his head off. They cut it up. They put a bunch of sprinkles in there. <laughs> And like that is honestly was kind of one of the most devious things possible. Very trying devious. to blame yeah. ice cream. And then Mr. <laughs> Carvel, who has never revealed his identity. He has not. No, no, no. no the fudgy theory. The I remember fudgy this thing. theory. <laughs> yeah. It's because it's, it, you know, it seems like. And also, not, by the way, JFK's brain is still missing to this day. They took his brain yes. out of his skull and it's gone. And I want a manhunt. <laughs> to be done. <laughs> the president's brain is missing. <laughs> Meanwhile, the president's brain is somewhere in Amsterdam with a new wife and family like <laughs> loving its life. Uh, no, I really, it's, it seems like it's really confusing. And it seems like it's hard to figure out what's actually going on. I hope I'm, I, I mean, I, I hope that I'm kind of straightening things out here a little bit. But mm. I, I think... There is literally not a single thing, Marcus, <laughs> that is not labyrinthian about the JFK assassination. We discovered it when we did the fucking series in the first place is that as soon as you go down one angle, you have to start explaining all this other stuff just to catch everybody up up to the point that you're trying to make at the current time and then everybody you love is gone. <laughs> Once you're at the end of it, everybody that you've ever cared for, all of your professional associates are gone. No one cares. No, I, I remember uh, back in the day when uh, we were writing the JFK series, I remember telling Carolina about this theory, like, like naked and screw and yelling about to get in the shower on brand. And she said, huh? Yeah. And yep. I told another fr friend and he, he said, huh, nothing, nothing. Just after like, not wow, that's, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Not a goddamn, just not even a, okay. Well, it's you know, <laughs> not even that. Just like in a, just a move, just a quick acknowledgement. Next subject. Next subject. But I do have one last thing here what? concerning the cover up, And this is from, the New York Times article. Yeah, this guy, because also when you, Marcus pointed out right before this was that when he's like, you know, if you read this article, you can tell this person has no fucking idea about the granular details of the JFK assassination. Well, it's just obvious that it was written quickly. It was. And they did. And the only thing that the writer didn't notice, and I don't blame them for not noticing this, if you're not a JF, if, if you're not a sass head, then you might miss this little detail is that they didn't. You got to be a sass head <laughs> to be within the sass head community and get those yeah. newsletters. Yeah. And really what the writer missed was that this guy said that there were, that he distinctly remembers there being two shots. But if, you know, JFK got hit in the back and the bullet was in the back seat, and if he got hit in the head by another bullet and if that bullet that was in the back seat did not hit Connolly, then that means that there had to be three shots. There had that to there be. Had to, that there's no, there's no way in hell that there wasn't three shots. But this paragraph right here that was kind of listed amongst a lot of naysayer paragraphs, Ooh. people saying, oh, I don't know about this happened. Like, this was included. Because if you look up the, I'm looking at right here for findings. If you go to archives.gov, what they are saying, the official line is still that there were two shots. Yeah. Yes. And with this, and this guy actually, even though he's saying that he distinctly remembers two shots, this if he's telling the truth, it proves that there were three shots. Yes. Uh, and this is a very interesting paragraph. Let me read this. Indeed, his partner, Clint Hill, the legendary Secret Service agent who clambered onto the back of the speeding limousine in a futile effort to save Kennedy, discouraged Landis from speaking out. Mr. Hill warned in a 2014 email saying, quote, many ramifications. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you I don't mean, get that's... to go to the White House Christmas party anymore. <laughs> you don't get to be a part of any of that shit. Seems... Oh, do you think they'll fire him? Do you think they'll get rid of his pension and shit? I don't know. All I know is that this guy, Clint Hill, knew something was up because many ramifications, that to me suggests that Clint Hill knows quite a bit about what actually happened. Because if there's like, because he's probably one of the guys that was inside. I forget who was. Do we know who the guy that was in the autopsy room that was like, 
when they were fighting over the body. Yeah, I don't know exactly who it was. It was it he was in that room. He yeah. must have been a part of that. He had to have been. Yeah, Clint Hill had to have been in that room. But there's, that's the thing is that like just a guy holding a bullet and putting putting a bullet somewhere else like that's a kind of a whoopsie doodle and yes. there aren't a lot of ramifications for a whoopsie doodle because all most of the people involved in it are fucking dead you what? know or almost dead like what are the ramifications and i think the ramifications are if people truly start looking into this thing again if they start giving this if they start looking into different theories besides just there was a second shooter and all yeah. that and so on and so forth then it might mean a lot for the secret service and it might mean a lot for the history of America, like rewriting the entirety of twenty late twentieth century history, uh, for it all to fucking kick off with a workplace accident. It's that a puts workplace all, uh, accident that puts all of late twentieth century history, at least world history, uh, and definitely Cold War history, yeah. into an entirely different light. It's just, I guess, that's it why changes so much. In the end, I'm just so more excited. I'm just much more excited about that theory mm -hmm. because it really is. It shows just like you know that. Anything can fucking change your whole fucking life. In a second. In a goddamn second. And you have no idea that it's coming. How does that fucking feel? <laughs> that feel you have no fucking clue when it's coming well it's like i said in the episode it's like you know a cia plot makes sense that gives order sure. to the world you know like they're being and, and they're not above it and yeah. they had motive that yeah. was a good, like that's a part of it they are not above it they had motive they've tried to do it before you know they all that type of shit it's just a matter about whether or not you believe that that was the dream team of the cia yeah that they're the ones who pulled it off i don't know that guy still like for me i i, I you know i i'm a professional agnostic <laughs> across the board. I don't believe in objective fucking knowledge. Yeah, but a workplace accident, something so chaotic, so like that's fucking scary because if something can happen to daddy president, because that's who JFK was. He was president daddy. Oh, yeah. Everybody fucking loved, not everybody. I mean, there was he, he a did lot. Well. He did well, but people were very fucking affected by the yes. death of the president back yes. then. Uh, and I think now, like if the president died, People wouldn't. People would barely fucking care. We just move on. You know, I feel like <laughs> they're like, like, which one is it? Like you wouldn't have people crying in the streets if the president was killed today. Oh, well, you know, God, it's different. It, well, it's you know, I have my riding, different. My thing is, I probably would stop wearing my riding with Biden dick sucking knee pads <laughs> that I use whenever I use any sort of do any sort of riding thing. I got riding with Biden on uh -huh. either side. You know, I got my. My hunter pipe. Yeah. Uh, I have to throw that out <laughs> because none of that's that, none of that's fun anymore. Yeah, that brings fun. up bad memories. It's know? not fun at all. So, uh, so, uh, so I guess, you know, we'll it's wait. It's interesting. We're we'll just... wait until this guy's book comes out. Maybe more details uh, will come out. Maybe people will start building upon this. Uh, but, you know, as we've seen with aliens, you know, they're, these conspiracy theories, you know, they just kind of, I don't know, they come and go. These old, these, this old school shit that America has been talking about for decades upon decades, it just, it comes and it goes. And it changes and, into new things. Yeah. And you find out new things. And we got JFK Jr.'s coming back. Again, mm. Obama's gay. <laughs> it's all back, man. I yeah. can't believe he wore a tan. Did you know? You've, have you seen? Have you read any of that? Uh, I've heard tell. Yeah. It's yeah. Funny. Uh, so the oh, so the JFK Jr. thing is that starting to to gain steam again? No, it went back because now RFK well, Jr. Was... He's now doing it for the family. Oh yeah, R so RFK Jr. He so uh, he's the new hot guy. So is QAnon switched from JFK Jr. over to RFK? I've been thankfully unplugged from the Q universe for a while. <laughs> as like, have I, as have I. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, well, now it's all like, it's very much on season 11 and mm. it's it's very much searching up the shark and yeah. you know, the original cast is gone. Oh yeah. So they're like, it's very difficult. Like you don't want to go like, oh, I don't want this new Darren. <laughs> you know, I'm sick of this guy. <laughs> yeah, no, and no one, no one likes the part of the show where they just spend a lot of time in court. No, 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 no that's no, where it gets it's boring. It's not exciting oh, anymore. Fly from your grave. Now, here's a death that I want to get into that is not so mysterious. Mm. Now, this is actually really, like, fucked up. And I, I wonder if there's going to be far-reaching, re true ramifications from something like this. Now, have you heard about this kid, the, the Pockies One Chip Challenge? Yes. Now, you like a, you like a Spice. Oh, I love a Spice. You like a Spice. But yeah. this kid, this is a lot. So, they made, it's one chip, and it goes inside of a thing that looks like a casket. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, uh, you know, again, funny idea. Yeah. There's somebody in a boardroom somewhere who was like, hey, get this. Yeah, this is going to be fantastic on TikTok. Mm -hmm. We put it in a little casket. And they're like, Greg, <laughs> you're fucking incredible. You know, and he's been like, yeah, I got to go out there. I got, I left my baby in my Maserati. And so uh, it turns out uh, that was bad. It was real bad. It was a bad idea. I so, mean, it, it was fun for a little while, but uh, it turns out that it, it can go awry. It can go awry. Uh, so they made it. So it's one chip. And it has, again, numbers that mean nothing to me. But it seems a lot. 1.6 billion Scovilles are in this fucking one chip. It was dusted with this. It was, I guess it's the... The Carolina Reaper and Naga Viper Pepper Juice, mm. right? Now, the, the what they said, the tagline was, how long can you last before you spiral out? And this is where it gets sad because then a young man, a 14-year-old child, literally took the fucking one-ship challenge and did not survive it. Mm -hmm. they, she, this kid took it, was b bent over. Literally, the mother came in, was like, what the fuck did you eat? He showed her the casket. That he just ate out of, and he he honestly he died not too long afterwards. Extremely sad story, but also not a good death because I you know like I've felt it. I did this to myself mm -hmm. when I went to recently. I did uh not that recently when I got into my full hot sauce revolution a couple of years ago. Right, and I got into goes you know, there was they did one for a while hot ones that was called the bomb. That kind of the point of it was that it was very, very, very unpleasant. Yes, of right? course. And I've told the story before, but it's true. I put it on a chip and I wanted to watch Hellraiser and I was like, I'm going to give myself the fucking <laughs> hell-based experience. <laughs> Hail, sweet, ate it, or whatever fucking bullshit. I ate it. It fucking did not help me enjoy the film. Horrific. I was in so much pain and I can't imagine what that would then be like. So to when, death. When you, I mean, it really was. I mean, it was an afternoon of pain. And then full death. Full and, death. And that is at, what is it right here? It says one point, we no, no, no. The very way, the bomb, ghost pepper is at 22,800 Scovilles, right? It also has beyond insanity, 1.5 million Scovilles. What in the living fuck? <laughs> like, how is that, how is that regulated? That's not regulated. We don't even have meat it's in not, the fucking tuna and Subway. It's not regulated, but the One Chip Challenge Company, they did promise a quote, truly twisted experience. I just, yes, it was a truly twisted experience because now we're at a goddamn funeral. <laughs> you know, it's just, I don't know how much longer we can continue to do these as a society. It turns your mouth and tongue blue. It's not, nothing should. Except Lickamade. What's Lickamade? You don't remember Lickamade? Lickamade was a wonderful candy. It was just pure. It was a bag of pure sugar. I don't. Actually, you got three different bags. Oh, it was Fun Dip. Yeah, I remember was, Fun Dip. Yeah, but Lickamade was the stick that came with the Fun Dip. Uh, but the, I was get the never blue into it, the super sweet. I just fucking, I'd pour that sugar into my fucking mouth. No, I I'm fucking very, loved it. It was never for me. I always liked dark chocolate. <laughs> I always liked it. I liked it bitter. I liked it a little bit more night. I mean, except when I got really into the Mr. Biggs, which I talked about on Tears of a Clown. Just if that's on Twitch. Guys, honestly, I've heard people say that Mr. Biggs is available in Canada. Please send it to me. Send it to the studio. P.O. Box 470. Valley Village. What is that? That's that, Lickamade? That's Lickamade. It's fun dip, but, you know, it's the candy that pours. Ugh, that's, what, that's the tagline. The candy line. that pours. Yeah, because you just open up a, a small paper bag full of sugar, full of flavored sugar, and then you pour it down your fucking gullet. Ugh. And then you just let your mouth get weird. It's like a mouthful of desert dust, except it's sweet and you can't breathe for a little while. And you just become everybody else's problem. <laughs> Like as soon as a child, yeah. as soon as you take it, you're fucking everybody else's oh. problem now because that is child free basic. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, that feeling at that. <laughs> 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 like even now, I can't even imagine ingesting that much sugar. Well, during your, you mentioned your hot sauce revolution and, and, you know, and I'm new here to side stories. So I feel like that I'm, I'm missing plot lines here. Yeah. Uh, during your hot sauce revolution, did you like that? Do you like the stuff that's called like, ass crusher. I don't like anything about crushing ass, anything about ripping hole. I don't like anything that's like napalm, napalm duke. I'm not into, I I like a flavorful, yeah. mid-level, I like it to enhance As do the I. food. I don't want it to destroy my experience. The whole point is, I'm at dinner here, I'm not supposed to be afraid 
of the food. And when you eat the food and it just hurts, because then I recently went to, this is a shout out, one of the best fucking restaurants in this goddamn city, Jitlada, where you oh gotta go. Oh my God, Jitlada's fucking incredible. It. But, so high. Same, same time. Because, you know, sometimes I'll let the night horse house. Yeah. Right, so when night horse comes out, I can't control him. Of course right? not. Because night horse, can't saddle that. Because I got it. Because guess who has a saddle? Day Henry. <laughs> right, it's called a job. It's a beautiful wife. A saddle I love. Yeah. But it's there. Mm-hmm. Right? But once you're night horse, doesn't fucking matter anymore. So does it's night all fucking garbage. So night horse can appear at a restaurant. <sighs> it did. <laughs> I went to Gelada. Me and my buddy. We yeah. ate probably close to a hundred dollars worth of food just to eat. And it's a cheap restaurant. Yeah. And I was. It was just like because you just forget because it's so tasty. Yeah. But the the heat slides up. And man, oh man, night horse. He visited me in the morning as well, and he just had a whole bunch of liquid fucking fiery ass shit. See, man, I I must have like I have an iron stomach because I eat like the hottest fucking Indian you food do. that you can produce. And I go to Jitla, I went to Jitlada with a buddy the other day, and like we just fucking housed like five different entrees, well, the hottest shit. That's and I was, your strength, and I, and I was fine. That is my strength. That's your strength. Yeah, I can eat the hottest shit in the world, and it not doesn't bother me. I'm kind of sensitive in the middle. Yeah, like I eat a lot. But, like, I'm not one of those. I'm not a performance eater. No, right? I'm like, not a performance eater. I'm, I still like it to be flavorful. As far as I'm concerned, I eat for the art of it. <laughs> I don't turn that. That's not a hobby I'm trying to monetize, yeah. right? I'm trying to get it. That's for me. I, I like to eat like I'm like no one's watching. Oh, that's nice. You know? But they are watching. They are watching. There's a lot of people watching. <laughs> but also, on Good Put, I've been doing fit best eaters in history. And you know, apparently, now this is real, said, like, I love watching videos of old fucking fat Italian guys eating food. I didn't know that. I love it. <laughs> and known as making, this is my whole side life. Yeah. Where I, my whole algorithm is, uh-huh. like, we've talked about, you know, tits, shoes, Nona's. Nona's. And uh, this, there's this one guy goes, nah, 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 and he eats all this food and he goes, nah, 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 and he just eats with this whole like face. He uh-huh. eats with his hand, both hands. Uh-huh. Like one hand's got bread and the other one's got some weird, this, like a tiny knife. This sounds you know, dangerously close to mukbang. <laughs> no, but they're not doing it for disgusting sexual reasons. <laughs> they're doing it because it's Italian. It's and Ita- they are. It's Italian to eat disgustingly. And in their culture, mm-hmm. according to several Instagram comments, it is actually very complimentary to do things while you're eating going <laughs> <laughs> because it means it compliments to do the shit. Oh, oh, because uh, the food is so good that you forget all decorum or manners. Yeah, you start going, <laughs> holy fucking shit. Oh. <laughs> That's the noise you got to avoid. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. That's, that's okay. So that's going too far. You don't want. You don't want that in. No. In at a family dinner with Nona. No. So is, want... is Nona the grandmother that makes the food? Always. Okay. So and I just wanted ba- to make sure I'm up on the nomenclature. Fucking back is like a goddamn question mark. She mm-hmm. hasn't been a woman <laughs> in a long time. You look at her hands and they're like two gnocchi machines. Mm-hmm. They're not hands anymore because they can't grasp anything. No. But what they can do is eat the waste. Eat the I do make a twist and they break it. Honestly, I made a pasta. And you love to see it. But honestly, if they grabbed a the hold of you, they would fucking, you know, that they grabbed your ear, they mm. would just rip it from your fucking skull. Oh, oh God. God. So fast. But I do want to update because we did get a little bit into shits. Um, so last week, yeah. we got really heavily into pooping. Which I would imagine is a common theme on this you show. You can't judge anymore. <laughs> You're not allowed to judge anymore. You're here now. This is it. I'm not judging. I'm just, I'm trying to catch up, man. This is it. I'm no. behind. I'm just, behind. You just, guys have been doing this show for years. I've never listened to it once. I, I'm <laughs> insulted. Number one, I'm furious. But now, but you see, this is the UQ catching. You'll see. Okay. So last week, there was a flight that was turned around that went from uh, Atlanta to Barcelona, ah. right? Where a person, which we now found, at first I, I did guess. I was like, this has to be a man. Um, but apparently it was a very old woman, which right. actually makes me really sad. It makes me really sad. Mm-hmm. But um, she covered this whole place in shit, hot, runny shit. Now mm-hmm. I feel bad, right? Because right. before I was saying like, uh, you know, like uh, you feel like in my mind, I was like, I'm not trying to victim blame here, but you know when that shit's a coming. I don't think you do. No, you're right. I, when you're See, an old, when you're an old person, you don't. This is it why you're now 
thank you. You have not for spe- being here. Yeah, because you have. I can tell you haven't spent a lot of time with old, like decrepit old people I who are dying. To. I never like, want that. You haven't been around a lot of dying, like action, like f- actively dying old people, I, or even very old people. Like the shit just comes, and you all have to pretend. Like it didn't happen. I like and new you just, people. You have to. Help. I like new, brand new, <laughs> you have fresh to, people. You have to help. You know, usually it doesn't happen outside of a hospital. Hopefully no. not. But it sounded like on this one it did. So did it start in the seat, and then I imagine it trailed once she felt the wetness. It trailed back to the uh, bathroom, or did it just all occur in the seat? Uh, it was everywhere. Uh, see, that's where I feel like that's where my judgment came in being like, if I'm massively uncontrollably liquid shitting, I'm sitting in that chair and right. I'm saving this whole fucking flight because I'm just going to let it all dump inside of me. And then you looked at this thing. If you saw the actual stream of it, yeah. it is why it is wild. But this poor woman. Right. But I actually got a lot of response from various people that, first of all, said, like, yeah, yeah. this is a whole scene yeah. that happened inside of this plane. Yeah, that really it. tells a story. Yeah, it really does. It's like the Stations of the Cross. <laughs> um, but this, I had several people before even that information came out that it was an elderly woman. I had several, like, people that worked in elder care who sent emails immediately that were like, that has to be an older person. Yeah. It does happen. And then I also got an interesting thing where people saying that there are certain autoimmune things that you can have, like postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which is POTS. Mm-hmm. That's another thing that I guess you did. You could just start shooting some dookie and you don't even fucking know. Yeah. Like the dookie just come. And for a while you just think, man, my butt's hot. Yeah. And then it's no, it's like, oh, no, it's bad. Yeah. yeah. So like I take it all back. I, I just I I don't blame you. I know, yeah, liquid shit, it come and it go again. You don't know when that shit's coming down the pipe. Really and don't. that's just a real that's about life. And you know, I have been thinking after reading a couple of emails that listeners have sent about some of their stories. Yeah. yeah. Uh and I've been thinking about because you know, we always wonder when you walk into a public bathroom and you see shit everywhere. Yes. And it's just absolutely everywhere. And you don't really, and you wonder like, what was wrong with this person? What I think what happens to most people, I think when the liquid shit comes, you panic. Sure. You absolutely panic. And I when you see- panic, th- shit gets flung around. But last week, last week, I was talking about all the different scenarios in which I have liquid shit and I knew it was coming. Right. And you, to be honest though, that's called what society is there for. Mm-hmm. You are searching for that toilet as fast as humanly possible. I don't really understand because if you're in the bathroom, Toilet is right there. Yes. But uh, most of the time, when I see shit everywhere inside of a bathroom, I assume this is a Joker-like person <laughs> on their own form of... Ki- this is their killdozer moment. Right. And this, they are fighting a- and railing against an unfair, rigged society right. inside of this gas station bathroom. Right. And that's just more just like, this is the wrong, right idea, wrong playing field. <laughs> right? But take this energy to the White House. <laughs> Like, this is where this needs to go. This needs to happen on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. Because then technically that's modern art. Right. And, well, I always think, well, actually, when I was a kid, when we were, I think I've told this story before, there was a kid when we were like in fifth grade that for some reason got into some, a, a bit of coprophilia. Um, Explain. Well, okay. Well, coprophilia is probably the bad way to put it. Uh, but for some reason, this kid decided in one of the bathrooms to take a dump in his hand and use that dump, use that turd okay. to write impossibly an artistic fashion, as you put it. This is my shit. Okay, well, on wow. the wall, honestly, in you, his tur- in his using his turd. You cut that out of a wall, right? That's Banksy. <laughs> <laughs> like that's like that's a big moment for but, that person because that's like because this is very much remember that Peep by Matisse. Um, the painting I, that says, oh, this, this is, is not, not a, a pie. pipe. Right. This is my shit. Yes. Interesting. But his, but that is not, you know, I'm giving it to you. I'm going to give it to you. Please. <laughs> Please just let me understand one thing. <laughs> You're getting there. I read. <laughs> Every day I read. You know, I read Jung. Yeah. You did read Jung. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't understand a goddamn word of it. It's really difficult to understand. I don't really understand it myself. I will also bring up because I think we're. T- I think it's close to hero of the week time. 
And I feel bad about this hero of the week. See, I like it. All right. Okay, it's nice. a good it's a good hero of the week, but I, Marcus I feel is bad about it. it. I, we, but I think it's important for you. This is your trial by fire. Yeah. I think it's important for you to understand a part of hero of the week and the ceremony of choosing hero of the week is that number one, it either involves uh, you must not understand a thing about human interaction or what a hero really is. Okay. Right? Because that's, again, just come from imagining. Imagine, you know, you're just take away. You don't know what a hero is. I don't. Sometimes you just think concepts are a hero. Got Sometimes it. you just think that, like, you'll just say, like, oh, the bucket. Like, you'll just point to a thing <laughs> in a room and you say, like, that's a hero. Okay. But what I like about this, what's been laid upon you is that this, uh, this really... This fucks you up because what's nice about this, it's conflicting. It's very conflicting. On what you've done. I mean, it's not, I'm not conflicted because what I did. It's I, a conflict of interest. It's a conflict of interest. Uh, this week's hero of the week is about a family who has taken in a 22 pound nutrient. Now, I like it because this motherfucker, this serial killer. I'm not a serial killer. I didn't do it on purpose. I did it because I had to do it, or at least I felt I had to do it. I was in a corner. Man, this is another one of those where Kissel would have no fucking idea what this animal is. I'm looking at this <laughs> thing right now. You had no fucking... We're trying to stay away from biology on the show no, to we, begin with, but... We, I, well, no, we talked about this on the stream fairly recently, so he knows what a nutria is. I... A nutria, it's a it's a massive rodent. It's like a big twenty. It's a twenty pound rat. It's a huge fucking rat. It is. They're native to Louisiana. Uh, they sometimes make their way into Texas, and they made their way to my part of Texas. No. One made its way to my part of Texas. I like. And this. when I was about ten years old, oh yes, yep. I was forced. I think, pretty sure, I was forced at the request of my father to go take care of the thing. Because he had to shed. teach you about ending shit. He taught me about ending shit long before. I grew up with, I grew up in the country. I grew up around death constantly. I didn't ever really enjoy it, but I uh, had to, uh, I beat a nutria to death with a snow shovel. And you think about this, and here's the first I line of this 10, article. Here's I the was first scared. I know, I know, I know, I know you were conflicted, but here's the first line of this article. It's like a soft, warm, calm dog, except for the scary orange teeth, webbed back feet. And it's nasty rat tail. No, it says that nasty, nasty, nasty rat tail. Nudie <laughs> is what they call it. Is Danny and Myra Lacoste's beloved 22 pound pet nutria. Oh, he, and he said it swims in the pool oh, and makes him laugh. He rides around in his pickup truck. He sticks his head out the window just like Georgie does. I know, but it's still, it's a big one. And I he, don't, I don't and know he if he certainly should always quite a stir at the McDonald's drive through window <laughs> because you are pulling up to the drive through window with a massive rat. And I like it because so, Denny says, don't worry, he hasn't bit anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is always good. It's always important yeah. to remember. Be like, this is my son, Daniel. He's never he's never bitten anyone. You know what? Now that I'm looking at it, I don't think I killed a nutria. Oh God, what did you kill? So I'm just going to show you this video too. No, this is I didn't one. kill a nutria. What did you? Oh, kill? Oh, this makes me feel good. No, it doesn't just, make me feel good. What the fuck did you kill? An incredibly large rat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you the story here. I'll look at this. Look at this no, video. I'll show you this right cow. here. Wow, this thing's cute. I didn't kill this at all. Did you see this thing? CCT footage of a in Mexico captures human like creature running on all fours. Did you see this thing? Look no. at this. Did you kill that thing? Look at that. Wow. What the fuck is that thing? Wow. That just that What just, is that? Look at this. Yeah, it might be it might be a person. What is that fucking thing? Uh that's a person on um mind altering substances. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh. That's what you killed. <laughs> no, I just killed a, a rat that was very, very large. And my father told me that it was a nutria. And now I'm thinking, because my dad also doesn't have the greatest grasp on reality yeah, all the why, time. Why would he know? Or like necessarily, I guess, would he know the difference between a large rat and a nutria? Kind of, a nutria sort of looks like a beaver. I think, yeah, a nutria does sort of look like Not a beaver. Not to bring that shit up either. He might have. <laughs> None of that shit. You didn't know the difference between a beaver I and a... I I don't want to... Whatever. <laughs> That's a muskrat. Is it a muskrat? No, it looks like a muskrat. No, it wasn't a muskrat. No, it was now that I'm thinking, because that's the thing I had. To, I remembered in my mind what a nutria was and this entire time. And maybe my dad said something like, that's as big as a nutria. 
And it's not a new tree. It wasn't a new tree at all. We're just now, now everybody's going to try to figure out what in the fuck happened in your childhood home. (laughs) And I I don't know what happened. I tell you the story. I went out to the shed and I killed a massive rodent with a snow shovel. Yeah, sure. You got to. Yeah, I beat it and I beat it. And then I said, and then I cut it in half with the snow shovel because it was very scared. and It was very aggressive. Or now it's just getting worse. (laughs) Now we're losing everybody. It was very aggressive. I I didn't know know what to do. (laughs) But I remember... So Fight I or flight, I, fu- I fought. Yeah, you have to. You have to. Um, I uh, growing up, I ha- I was friend with the. Uh, 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 basically, I was looked after by a young guy that was like. And I'm sorry to a- our rat people. I'm very sorry. Yeah, we know. We know. They know farm rats are different than your home rats. Uh, but yeah. this guy, he, how do you put it? He wasn't. It's not that he was in the mafia. Okay, this is a Queens neighborhood guy. This is a Queens neighborhood guy, but he was a guy that was really good to me. He was like an older brother to me, and he was really, really sweet to me. But he, like, he he kind of fancied himself, and he kind of wanted to do that. He kind of walked the life, right? So he had had a couple of guns. And so one time he said... And guns. This was, yes. And this was during a time in New York... And this when I was a child, we had, which is now they're currently the rat czar is out there trying to kill all the rats. It's fucking ridiculous. It's oh, like it's, Fern Gully it's five. It's like a whole ever <laughs> five go, goes militant. I was reading is it it's so out of control that like rat nests have now started to become like parts of city tours yes. where like they take people to like this is one that you can find the largest concentration of rats in New you York City out, in this one fucking spot. Yeah, we got out <laughs> at the right time. Good Lord. Yeah. But uh, so in that, at the time period when I was growing up, it was this time of a massive rat epidemic. Sure. And so we had to put, well, we had a basement bathroom. So in Queens, we had to put cinder blocks on top of the basement bathroom toilet. Sure. Because they would come up through the toilet. They would go, and they were big. Yeah. And so we said, one time, this guy, this my, my friend was asleep in his house, and he woke up to his, jor- his fucking German shepherd going nuts. Yeah. He's like, Hur-hah! Hur-hah! And he looked and he said, I swear to fucking God, I saw a rat the size of a fucking tabby cat. <laughs> right? And he was going, ah, ah. and he was like, and he freaked out because he's this dumb shit Italian guy. Really, you know, I mean, a very sweet man, but still at the same time, he didn't know what to do. So he just pulled out his gun and he shot it three times. <laughs> In the middle of his fucking ba- in the middle of his fucking basement, Spl- it's like you wouldn't fucking believe its guts splattered all over the back wall, and we're like, oh, cool, oh, nice, yeah. Oh, I've heard very similar stories of that, except it wasn't inside someone's house; it was usually in the yard, in someone's yard, or just sometimes people in Texas just pull over to shoot shit. You just see it, and you just pull over and you shoot it. And I love the attitude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got, this has been, we made no, it. This is no. our first episode of Siren Stories. You've learned this? I've learned right, this. You're very welcome to this. I, I um, can tell you a very disturbing story about an emu right now, but you know what? I'm going to skip right past it. I think it's a good idea <laughs> because now that you're going to be doing side stories, I think we'll get to it. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah, we'll get to it. So next week we're going to do, you know, we're just rolling on. Yeah, we just can rolling keep on. keep doing the show. Um, check out all of our bullshit. Make sure you live every day taking care of your goddamn self. Please do. If it's time. Do it. You got to, right? You know, love the fact that sometimes you got to fucking lean on your family to do that shit too. Yeah. And if you don't got a family, you use your chosen family, which is what we have here. Yeah. Which is one of the, the I can't believe the fact that, you know, we're all still together and we're working like this for a really long time and, and it really means a lot. And then sometimes you just got to laugh because yeah. if you ain't laughing, you're going to be in the fucking mental institution. <laughs> There's someone's going to come and literally wrap you up in a fucking blanket yeah. and knock you on the head with a hammer. And if you don't have a chosen family, if you're alone, do it for yourself so you can find that chosen family. Yeah, you fuckers. All right, we'll be back next week. This fucking week, and the fucking rest of your goddamn lives. All right. Hail Satan! Oh, hell, Gene, yeah, I guess. Hail me, if you would. And I'll say hell yourself. Yeah, you do it. Hell yourself. This show is made possible by listeners like you. Thanks to our ad sponsors. You can support our shows by supporting them. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to lastpodcastnetwork.com. Yeah.